Hello everyone, in today's video, we're going to practice what we have learned about classes and objects in the previous videos of the Python Fundamentals series. Let's get started. As you may have realized, classes are generally used to model things that exist in the real world. So today, to practice our object-oriented programming skills, we'll be making a program that deals with geometric shapes. We can use classes to represent shapes. For example, we can have one class that represents quadrilaterals and another that model circles. We can use instance attributes to store data related to each shape instance. For example, in the circle class, we can have a radius instance attribute. Last but not least, we can use methods to perform calculations on the shapes such as calculating their area. We're going to use classes and objects to model the shapes, and we can also use inheritance. For example, since squares have all the properties of rectangles, we can have the square class inherit from the rectangle class. Lastly, we can use dunder methods to make our classes more powerful. So let's get started writing our program. All right. Now I'm going to show you my implementation of this shapes program. So I have made a file called shapes.py and I'm in Sublime Text, which is my favorite code editor where I will be writing this program. So what I have in mind for this program is I'll be writing a total of four classes, a quadrilateral class, a rectangle class, a square class, and a circle class. So those are going to represent exactly what their name suggests. So quadrilateral is going to represent quadrilaterals, rectangle for rectangles, squares modeling, squares and circles for circles. So firstly, quadrilaterals. So when we define a class, we can write class followed by the name of the class, in this case being quadrilateral, and then a colon. So if you need a reminder, a quadrilateral is a two-dimensional geometric shape with four sides which is why the init method is going to take four parameters other than self. So S1, S2, S3, and S4. Those are the four side lanes of a quadrilateral. And in the body of the init method, we're going to assign those values to instance attributes. Self.S1 is S1. Self.S2 is S2. Let me just duplicate this. This is going to be three and this is, is going to be 4. On the left side of the equal signs, those are what's known as, what are known as instance attributes. Those are the values associated to a certain quadrilateral instance, instance of the quadrilateral class. On the right side, those are what's passed in when we create the object. And we are assigning those values to the instance attribute, so we, it can be used in other places in the class. So now that we have this quadrilateral class defined, let's make a quadrilateral. So quadrilateral is equal to quadrilateral, and we can pass in four values. Remember how we can we don't have to pass in self, so we can pass in s1 through s4. So let's pass in one, two, three, four. And if I print out quadrilateral, we're going to get quadrilateral object at this memory location. This doesn't tell us about the side length information of this object. So let's write an repr method to help us with that. So repr underscore underscore. Both init and repr, those are what's known, what are known as dunder methods. So we, ha we can put two, or we have to put two underscores before and after the method name. The repr method is going to return a representation, a customized representation of the quadrilateral instances. And in the case of quadrilaterals, I'm going to have a return quadrilateral with side lengths, and then S1, S2, S3, and S4, because those are numerical values, be it uh, loads or ints. So we have to convert them into strings before concatenating them to other strings. So now if I run this program, we're going to get quadrilateral with side lengths 1, 2, 3, 4 when we print out quadrilateral. That's much more helpful, and we can actually tell 
the side lanes information of this particular object. So now we have the quadrilateral class defined. Let's make the rectangle class, which is second on our list. So class rectangle. Instead of having it not inheriting other classes, however, since a rectangle is a quadrilateral, it has four sides, so a rectangle has all the properties of a quadrilateral class, we can have it inherit from the quadrilateral class. And in the init method of this class, it's going to take two parameters, S1 and S2, so the length and the width information of the rectangle. While we can manually assign s one and S2 to those values, we can practice inheritance by calling the super dot init method with those values. So we can pass in self or S1, S2, S1, and then S2 again. So let's take a look at what will happen. When I create a rectangle instance, we're passing in S1 and S2. S1 is going to be taken down here. So in this line of code, we're calling the super class in its method with S1 and S2. And S1 is going to be passed in as S1 and S3. So both self.S1 and self.S3 is going to be equal to whatever we pass in as S1 when we create the rectangle instance. So we can also create another method. Let's just create a method for calculating area, so calc area. And the calc area method is going to simply return self.S1 multiplied by self.S2. So the length multiplied by the width is going to be what's returned by the calc area method. And then we can create the repr method. So underscore, underscore, repr, underscore, underscore. And this time, I'm going to have it return both the side length, the length and width information of the rectangle, and also the area information by calling the calc area method. So I'm going to have the method return RV. But what is RV? Well, RV is going to be equal to rectangle with side lengths self.s1 and then self.s2. And then we're going to append the information, the area information onto RV, which stands for return value, by the way. So it's going to, let's add area and then the self.calc area method. And then we return RV. So if I create a rectangle object now, rectangle, let's make it lowercase so as to not confuse the class and the variable, rectangle, and we have to pass in two values, S1 and S2. Let's pass in, say, 5 and 10, or 5 and 10. And now if I print out rectangle, not return, rectangle, we're going to see rectangle with side lengths 5 and 10, and the area is 50. If I change this around, for example, to 3 and, uh, say, 6, we're going to get 18 as the area. So now we know that the calc area as well as the repr method are both working properly. So now let's create a square class because that's the third thing on our to-do list. So class square. And just like how a rectangle is a quadrilateral, a square is a rectangle. So we can have that be in uh, we can have the square class inherit from the rectangle class. So we put the parentheses after the class name and put the in, put the super class name after or inside the parentheses, colon. And in the init method of the square class, it's only going to take one parameter, s, which is the side length of the square, since four sides, all four sides of a square is equal. And in the body of this method, we can call super.init and super.init is going to call this one, this one right here. So it's going to call the rectangle init method, which takes two parameters. So we can pass in S and S. So whatever we pass in here is going to be both the length and the width passed into the rectangle init method. 
And in the rectangle init method, the length is going to be passed in as S1 and S3, and S2, which is the width, is going to be passed in as S2 and S4 in the quadrilateral init method. So it climbs all the way up to the quadrilateral class init method when we're creating a square um, object. And for the out area method of the square class, we can have it return self.s1 multiplied by self.s2. Notice how we don't use s since s is just a local variable in the init method and it doesn't exist in the calc area method. And s1 and s2 are instance attributes that belong to the square instance because up here we are assigning the s1 and s2, s3 and s4 to those instance attributes, self.s1 through self.s4. So those are accessible in the calc area method. As for the underscore underscore repr method, well, we're going to have it return rb again. This time, rb is going to be equal to square with side length and then self.s1. And then we can have rv plus equal to, in fact, I'm pretty sure this is the exact same thing, so let's just copy this down here. So rv plus equal to area and then self.calc area. And then we return rv at the end of this method. So let's make a square object called square. And let's pass in 100, for example, and print out square. If I run this, you'll see square with side length 100 has an area of 10,000 since that's 100 squared. And lastly, we're going to make a circle class. So let's, or why did I make a method? I mean to make a class called circle. And unlike square and rectangle, a circle is not a quadrilateral. It doesn't have four side lengths. Therefore, we don't have it inherit from any other class. So we're just going to put a colon right here. And in the init method of this class, it's going to take one parameter, r. And r is going to, assign, to be assigned to the instance attribute radius. Self.radius is equal to r. And in the calc area method of this class, we're going to have it return self dot, or it's going to be pi r squared, so 3.14 multiplied by self dot radius raised to the second power, so pi multiplied by r squared. And now we just have to write the repr method to complete this class. And again, I'm going to use return value to do to make this easier. So let's just make it so that we return rv. And rv this time is going to be equal to circle with radius and then the radius information. And then we can have the same line again. So area is going to be equal to self.calc area, which is calling this method right here. And that's it for this circle class definition. Now we just have to make the circle object called circle. And let's just pass in a random number as its radius. Let's pass in five. And if I print out circle, we can see circle with radius five has an area approximately 78.5. So as you can see, in this program, we used classes. Those are the blueprint of how a circle should behave, how what information should be stored regarding a circle. In this case, it's just the radius. And the calc area performs the calculation of the circle's area. We get the area by calling the calc area method. Uh, we can do it inside here in the repr method. And at the same time, we can also call the circle.calc area method explicitly at the end. So we can see 78.5 can also be calculated by explicitly calling the calc area method. So hopefully this video has given you some idea, some you have learned something about classes and objects as well as inheritance, 
how we can have square inherit from rectangle and rectangle inherit from quadrilaterals. And hopefully you've also learned about the init and REPR method, both of which are dunder method. And that's it for today's object-oriented programming project. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a thing or two about Python. With that said, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in my next video.